Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about Abercrombie. Now, that is giving me some serious flashbacks to, believe it or not, back in the day I used to be an Abercrombie girly, which as of right now, my style has, I'd say, changed just ever so slightly. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I feel like for years now, there have been things popping up here and there about Abercrombie, but it's never been big enough where I felt like it was all over my timeline where I really felt like we were collectively talking about it. You know those news stories that you can't get away from even if you want to? I never felt like it hit that level. I feel like there were articles here and there and then there was a lot of silence and then there never seemed to be a conclusion or a consequence. And it was also never clear what was actually a fact versus something coming from a small little media publication that no one's ever heard of that nobody could confirm. All this to say it was a shit show. I'm gonna talk about some of that now, mainly because it came back up on my radar. So this was published on October 4th and it says Abercrombie and Fitch is investigating abuse accusations against ex-CEO. The retailer says it's engaged a law firm to investigate accusations that Mike Jeffries, its CEO, from 1992 to 2014 exploited young men. I think we all know what I'm going to say. Is this story quiet and is it not at the forefront putting aside all the things going on with the war because that will be at the forefront. But aside from that, is this story not at the forefront or was it not at the forefront when it started, when the ball got rolling? Because the victims are men? A question for you to answer, we all know what my answer is and it's yes. Because if 12 women came forward against someone, you could not convince me that that would not be one of the biggest news stories going on at the time. But maybe I missed it, maybe it was all over the news and I just wasn't tuned in at the time. That's very possible. Abercrombie & Fitch says it is investigating allegations that ex-CEO Mike Jeffries, who led the company for more than 20 years and defined its modern image, exploited men at sex parties he hosted. BBC News reported on Monday that 12 men described attending or organizing events that included sex acts for Jeffries and his partner Matthew Smith. Some of these men said they were exploited or didn't participate willingly. Those events took place from 2009 to 2015, according to the BBC. So there's another layer of this that I'm not going to comment on extensively just because I really don't feel equipped to. What I am going to say is that I think that here there's also an overlap because in the past, we've seen gay men be equated with pedophiles and just like completely ridiculous stereotypes, let's put it that way. So gay men in the past have been treated in a criminal way. Here though, we have kind of the overlap of people not believing that men can be victims. So we have the overlap of that stupid belief set and then we have the fact that this person is in a gay relationship. Now, do those things particularly matter to me? No, because if you're a victim, you're a victim. If you're a criminal, you're a criminal. Whether you're a man, a woman, straight, gay, whatever, truly does not change my opinion of you being a criminal or a victim. That being said, I do think it changes things for the public. It changes things for publications, what they want to say out loud. You guys consider that and come to your own conclusions. I just wanted to underline that that is a dynamic that I think we can't pretend isn't there. Two of the men the BBC spoke to disclosed their identities on the record and the BBC said it had confirmed key points of their stories by fact-checking emails, flight tickets, and other documents, as well as interviewing dozens of other people. It was not clear if any of the men had filed police reports. The BBC also reported that in the months before Jeffries left the company, a pension fund that had invested in Abercrombie and Fitch initiated a legal claim that the company had paid out settlements after allegations of misconduct by Jeffries. I'm not gonna say that means that you're automatically guilty of everything, but it certainly does not look good. The fact that you already have some settlements out there for quote unquote misconduct, and then you have 12 people coming forward alleging the same type of misconduct, some of which are on the record and have been confirmed to you know, have the flight tickets, their identities. I'm just gonna say it looks bad. Brian Bieber, Jeffrey's attorney, told NBC News that Jeffrey's would not comment on reports about his personal life. Smith did not respond to requests for comment. I mean, what really can you say? And it's probably best to shut the fuck up in this case because I really don't know 
what you could say at this point. You'd have to let the evidence speak for itself if there is any. In a statement to NBC News, a spokesperson for Abercrombie & Fitch said the company was appalled and disgusted by the allegations. Okay, that's just the typical PR. It said that its current leadership and board were not aware of the allegations against Jeffries and that it has engaged an outside law firm to investigate the issues raised by the BBC's reporting. Now, I'm not a business girly, so you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, if anyone here is watching is a business girly or a business man. <laughs> Isn't that just like due diligence if you're buying a company to kind of know what the fuck is going on? Now, maybe it's just me who's paranoid about things, but wouldn't you run some kind of background check to make sure that all of this and the people running the company aren't looped into some weird shit, whether it's misconduct or even just illegal activity that will somehow be connected to the company that will be connected to you. Kind of like before buying a house, typically what you're supposed to do is get someone to do not an investigation, but they check out the house, they check the pipes to make sure nothing's broken before you buy something that is going to just give you trouble and cost you in the end. Is that not something people do in business? Do they not run any kind of check? Because I really don't think this would have been that hard to find. I'm pretty sure a Google would have found Okay. Jeffries was CEO of Abercrombie & Fitch from 92 to 2014. When he was hired, the company had recently emerged from bankruptcy and had a stodgy image. During his tenure, it became a much imitated retailer that defined how younger people looked and dressed. It was also frequently criticized and repeatedly boycotted for sexualized ads and messages on its clothes. So if I'm not mistaken, and again, this could be just like a fever dream of like the Abercrombie days, but if I recall, they had some pretty young models and there was some weird shit going on in the ads. And I also remember, and this probably is just my experience, but Abercrombie for me was very closely associated with the pro Anna, pro Mia movement. So like a lot of people who were anorexic and bulimic or had eating disorders, generally the people who were feeding into their eating disorders who wanted to continue having them and bullied other people into having them, a lot of that was associated with Abercrombie. And I can't remember, I need to fact check this if I can find it. But I remember that they stopped their sizes at relatively low sizes. Like I remember I could never buy jeans at Abercrombie. I'm pretty sure I could never because they never had my size. And at the time I was like a size six or eight. I remember that it was a thing. Kind of like it's a thing for Brandy Melville to not really have sizes in terms of pants or last I checked, which was like a couple of years ago. So maybe, maybe things have improved. Later in Jeffrey's tenure, the company fell behind rivals and newer fast fashion competitors. Its financial results also began to weaken, which hurt the company's stock. Jeffrey's lost his title as chairman following pressure from investors and then left the company. So there's also the question of why are the investors asking you to leave? Is it all a financial thing? Is it all based on you know, your productivity or lack thereof, or did they know something? Most of Abercrombie and Fitch's current management and board of directors joined after Jeffries left the company, although Fran Horowitz, who has been CEO since February 2017, was president of ANF's Hollister brand for the last two months of Jeffries' tenure. Frankly, at this point, I would abandon the sinking ship. I don't know if people still buy Abercrombie and Fitch. I don't know what the youths are doing, honestly, so far be it for me to say, Nobody cares about Abercrombie and Fitch. I personally don't know anyone who cares about Abercrombie and Fitch anymore. I did not remember their existence. I don't even remember ever seeing their stores unless I'm at a mall and I see a very dimly lit place with like the stench of perfume coming out. But you guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. Do you think this isn't getting publicity or like any kind of big public reaction aside from everything else that's going on in the world because the victims are men? Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always and I'll catch you guys next time.